Now, when people ask, well, okay, because this particle count is so high, for example, the woman in Montreal, she asks, well, does that mean that there's mold in the air? Well, we don't know that. That's why we're doing another test. Because there are other things in the air other than mold spores that would attribute to a high particle count. Part of it could be biological contaminants, such as living organisms, like mold, <coughs> dust, bacteria, other things floating around. The other things that could be in the air that causes a high particle count or poor indoor air quality is chemical contaminants, such as you know gases uh, that could be caused by different types of appliances, by um, people, by <laughs> household cleaning products, and other things as well. And then the um, other types include volatile organic compounds. That is a, a fancy word for uh, things that are decomposing. <laughs> uh, pollen, bacteria and viruses, and uh, insects and insect fecal matter. There was uh, an incident about a year and a half ago where, uh, uh, again, a poor individual in a home was being really, uh, she was getting sick as a dog, nonstop, and we, we went and we couldn't find mold. But uh, when we did a particle count and we did a test of the air, we determined that there was a high level of um, mice fecal matter. And there was mice that were inside the walls that had left huge deposits. And that, of course, causes some major problems because it gets breathed into the air, it disintegrates, and it, you know, those. <laughs> I don't need to get into graphic detail, you guys know what I'm getting at, right? And so when we're dealing with, or when we're trying to discover what good indoor air quality is, we're you know, factoring a number of different, different things. So when we're going into a home, for example, or when you guys are going into a home and, and doing what you guys do best, there are very, very different things to consider uh, with regards to air quality. We're starting to hear about this more and more uh, in the news in particular, where you know, we need to, the, the awareness of mold is becoming more and more. About 15 years ago, you would rarely see companies that their sole thing was about mold detection and removal. This is a recent thing because now, especially in Ottawa in particular, we're dealing with a city that has an aging infrastructure. So the buildings are getting older and older and older. They have been you know, not maintained properly. Ottawa enjoys uh, uh, relative levels of humidity on a regular basis. So we're really in a prime ground for um, contaminants with mold. And as a result, we're seeing more and more cases. More and more people are going to the hospital sick, and we're being able to determine more and more often that it's caused by mold or other biological contaminants in the air. Now more than ever, people are starting to realize the importance of maintaining good indoor air quality in their homes, workplaces, and other environments. As I just mentioned, Ottawa is a hot spot for mold. One, we're right beside a water. Uh, body of water, the Otter River. And yeah, actually all around us, we have the Rideau River, we have a variety of different creeks and ponds, so we're actually in a, in a pretty interesting area for mold. Again, we're part of an aging infrastructure, our city, and uh, including uh, those up at Parliament Hill, and we are in a region that enjoys you know, relative high humidity. And so all of these factors combined brings Ottawa and the homes and the offices that are around uh, potential breeding grounds for mold and other problems. <laughs> I love this picture, I don't know why, but um, the thing is with, with us is that we provide the very best equipment <coughs> possible to determine what we're dealing with. So I'm just going to go through some of the different types of equipment that not only ourselves but other companies would use in order to determine again air quality, uh, mold counts, and so on and so forth. One of the things that we like to use, especially, is a thermal imaging camera. And this is important. Uh, remember earlier where we talked about how leaky pipes are uh, often a source uh, for potential mold problems because, well, they're behind walls, it's dark, and there's moisture, there's humidity. So what we need to do is be able to determine non-intrusively uh, that there is, um, for example, a leaky pipe or levels of moisture within, within a wall or within an area. The thermal imaging camera does exactly that. Uh, we usually bring a pile of our tools with us, um, but we decided not to today because of the time. But if I were to, for example, point uh, this camera at anyone in particular, it would, it would just be glowing red. Because you know, we generate a lot of body heat. 
And this becomes important when we're scanning a home for moisture because it'll show up as a, obviously as a different color. The interesting thing when we do an infrared camera test is that we're able to provide people with detailed reports, images of the scan areas, and be able to pinpoint exactly some of the problems. For example, <coughs> if it's water leakage, if it's air loss, other common uh, you know, issues that we would encounter on a regular basis. And actually being able to use and uh, process these reports requires special training. So anyone who uh, would come to someone's home with a thermal imaging camera to do an assessment is actually a certified uh, technician. The particle counter, which is what we had to use at the beginning to determine that we are now breathing in 550,000 particles, uh, is an interesting uh, device. It's used to locate the amount of uh, particle emissions in the air. So basically what it does is it absorbs the amount of particles and is, is able to generate a count. If you take that outside right now, what should you get? Uh, roughly, right now, what do you think, Andre? About one million. About one million. And it varies on the different types of, like, uh, uh, the times of the day. If we were to go early in the morning or late at night, that's when you would get a more accurate reading to the actual air because there's less emissions and this part of the city as well as another factor of the temperature. So there's very, well, a lot of different factors. A moisture meter is an interesting tool. Uh, I was actually able to see Andre use this the other day for the first time ever. And uh, it looks like this, looks like a little remote control. And uh, he put it on his hand and it started beeping right away because there's moisture inside because our bodies are filled with water. And so this one uh, at the time in the home was absolutely convinced that there was water in the walls because a previous inspector said, well, the reason why you're sick is because you're breathing in mold. And the reason why you have mold is because you have this leaky, uh, leaky window and it's all, you got moisture <coughs> all up inside of this wall around the window. So Andrew's like, okay, well, we'll see about that. And he took his moisture meter, put it on his hand, started beeping put on the windowsill and it wouldn't beep at all. And so this device is used to be able to determine whether there's moisture and in a particular environment. And it's uh, non-invasive, it's non-intrusive I should say, it isn't, uh, we don't need to cut into walls or, or break things apart. So it's a very interesting tool to help us determine if there's moisture. And if there is moisture inside of a wall, then we need to do further testing to determine if there's actually mold growth. Uh, the HEPA filtration system is, again, when we're talking about you know, it's necessary to have good air quality and proper ventilation. And I mentioned it's not just having a fan on the air. This is what we're essentially talking about, is that having a, a filtration system that's able to absorb all of the pollutant particles in the air and filter it back out as clean air. And that's essentially what this does. So it removes particles greater than one micron and uh, is able to um, filter it out so that it's at a proper level. Mold spores are between two and 20 microns. And uh, which means that when, um, if there's mold in the area and it goes through a filtration system, that's uh, a HEPA filtration system, it means that the mold spores won't come back out. It'll get absorbed. Now, if you notice that it says mold spores between two and 20 microns, it's because there are different forms and different types of molds uh, that are around. And uh, so some people who are breathing them in, for example, may not be uh, compromise in any shape, uh, way or shape or form because it's at a low level. It's maybe between the two and six count. But if it's at a high concentration, we're looking at you know 15 to 20, and that's where it can become potentially hazardous. Something that's slightly different than a HEPA uh, filtration system is an air purification machine. We call this the hyper HEPA filtration, and it's tested and it's able to bring down the level in a room to almost a near zero. So we're talking hospital laboratory standards. Uh, I remember a year ago we did a presentation um, for, I think it was a home inspectors committee, and there was uh, about 60 or 70 of them in, in the room. And uh, we did a particle count, and it was and it was pretty high, actually, because of, you know there was food going on. It was in a million around that. And we decided to take the uh, air purification machine and turn it on. And within a couple of minutes, it brought down that particle count from one million <coughs> down to, I think it was maybe a couple hundred in a matter of seconds. So it's able to absorb uh, the air, filter it out, and bring the best air quality you could possibly have. So you know, we encourage people to try to get these in, uh, in their homes or offices. It'll just do that much to improve air quality around um, your workplace and where you live. How much does that cost, that piece of equipment? About uh, seven, 
thousand dollars. About a thousand dollars now. Yeah. So that includes with uh, getting. Uh, we get, I think, with extra filters with that as well, am I correct? Yeah, so with $1,000, you get the machine, extra filters delivered right to your front door, uh, practically unwrapped for it if you want. <laughs> so it's a very, very good machine. Is it good for a whole house? Yes. Okay. So like, and it will depend, depends on, on the yeah. size of the house. If we're, if we're talking a palace and maybe getting a couple would be like a basement. Or a basement. Perfect. And uh, do you see that being part of building code one day? Who knows? Be interesting. Uh, I think uh, maybe even built right into the the system itself yeah. might be a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So some of some of the other tools that we like to use, obviously, is safety. You know, like we described at the very beginning, and, and I appreciate everyone's patience. We're almost done here. I know it's a lot of boring material to assimilate. Uh, it's interesting for us, but we hope you guys learned something. Uh, one of the things that we essentially need to do when we're uh, investigating a home or doing an assessment is ensure that, our, that we are safe. And that includes having proper respirators, protective suits, helmets, gloves, uh, the whole nine yards. Because as we learned earlier, right, that person who had uh, skin contact with black mold, it didn't take long at all for that person's entire body to be completely covered with grossness. <laughs> So mold inspections, mold busters, we provide comprehensive air quality testing, mold inspection, and mold remediation services in the Ottawa Gatineau region. We've been around for almost 15 years. We have offices in Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, across Canada. Recently opened up uh, offices in Singapore, Malaysia. So uh, it's a growing, growing business because it's a growing problem. When you take an air sample, where do you uh, send it to get it uh Analyzed. We have a, lab, a government laboratory that we send it to. And, um, in Toronto? Uh, in Michigan. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so we actually we take the air quality <coughs> test. We take two. We always like to do comparative tests. Send them, and then uh, when we receive them back within four business days, we get a 15-page detailed report. Because what, what the air quality tester would do is it it, uh, it kind of looks like a little disc. Inside of this disc, there's like a sticky pad. And so what this special device does is it, it vacuums all the air for six minutes onto this pad. And uh, five, sorry, five minutes onto this pad. And uh, it's able to, uh, then we take that little desk sensor laboratory, and they're able to take every single particle that was absorbed onto that pad and be able to determine what type of particles in the air, so what's exactly floating around the atmosphere, its, it's count, its level of toxicity, and a whole bunch of other other areas. So when, for example, doing a, uh, an inspection for a house in which you need to ensure that the air quality is good, doing a proper air quality test with that type of documentation will save uh, many people a bunch of headaches in the future. So on, in addition to that, we naturally we do you know visual inspections of mold, we do the infrared camera testing, and not only that, not only do we do the actual testing uh, for mold and uh, for inner air quality, but we also offer the services to fix it and remediate it as well. So we're, we're involved in every step of the process if you would allow us to. So we just watch how long does it take to get the report back? Four business days. Which is uh, one of the fastest turnarounds for that type of report <coughs> anywhere. So there's an increasing demand uh, for air quality testing. Uh, we're finding that more and more. I think that's what we're doing more than anything now, but it's actually really good because, like I said, it's able to de determine and, and uh, dissect every single particle that's in the air. So we'll, if there's mold, this test will be able to determine if there is mold in the air because we're dealing with a microscopic organism that likes to float around wherever it can. Uh, and we're dedicated to mold awareness and education, so we do these seminars and other types of uh, information uh, seminars on a regular basis for, for anyone who wants. <coughs> Mainly so that we could you know, let people know that it's a complex issue that requires professional help and that there are professionals like us that are able to do it well. So guys, thank you very much for all your time and attention. We hope you learned something. And if you have any questions whatsoever, Andre and I would be happy to answer.